Hi everyone, welcome back to part three of working through the Ascension machine over on Hack Smarter. Now this is part three, so this is the first video you're watching. I recommend watching parts one and two first so that you are not lost. Additionally, if you do not have a subscription to Hack Smarter, it is incredibly affordable. Go to hacksmarter.org and sign up for the hands-on labs or the all access plan. You learn a lot by watching me. You learn even more by doing the lab right alongside of me, having your own hands on your own keyboard. You may also notice that I have people talking right here. I make all of these videos while I'm live streaming because I believe this type of content should be as affordable and as accessible for as many people as possible. But if you purchase the hack with me that I create after the content is all done, you get even more benefits. So with the hack with me, you get custom notes for every single module. You get one-on-one -on -one support from me if you have any issues. You get my personal notes from Notion as I was working through the machine. You get interactive quizzes to reinforce the content and even more as part of that purchase for the hack with me. So hey, whether you're watching this as a standalone video on YouTube or you're working through the hack with me over on Hack Smarter, thank you so much for being here. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll pick up right where we left off on the Ascension machine. A really quick recap, if we look over at our notes, we have the first two flags and we just compromised user two. We noticed that there was a cron job running backup.sh in the temp directory. We created our own backup.sh and when it was triggered by the user, it allowed us to get a, a shell as user two. And at the end of the last video, we backdoored that user with our own SSH key. And now we have a stable SSH session on the user two user. And we have a few things in our notes that are going to be worth digging into. We saw that MySQL is running. We saw this cron job, which we already abused, and we have a list of users right there. And if we jump over to Ascension, this is different than our other labs because there's multiple flags that you need to find since this is a capstone challenge for my friend Ryan's course on hacking Linux. But you can see it says flag three is actually an opt FTP user. Flag four is MySQL database under flags. Then we have a user three and we have a root user. So flag three is potentially we need to compromise an FTP user. And then flag four is MySQL database. We already know that there's a MySQL database running and that was something I wanted to dig into. So let's just begin enumerating MySQL to see what access we have. I think if we just try MySQL U user two, I don't think we have our user's password and we do not. We can do LSL here. And there's a few things that stand out to me right away, although some of it might be me as we begin enumerating. We have bash history, which has some content in it, but that might actually just be my commands and not something we can abuse. Apparently I typed it wrong the first time. Yeah, so those are just my commands that are running from what I can see. That was previously when I made that backdoor SSH key, and this was just today before I started recording when we made our backdoor SSH key. So we can go ahead and continue to just enumerate, see what we're able to find. I'm going to say ID. Are we in any special groups? We are not. Can we? Do we have any pseudo privileges? And we do not. We can go out to the root directory, do lsla, and see if there's anything interesting here. Now, I think I did some of this before, but I don't actually remember what I all checked. That's right, here's where all the flags are and, and user two. I think the only thing we have there is flag two. But we have user three and we have the FTP user. I obviously cannot access any of these other ones here. Let's go back out to this. We can go to var. I don't think there's anything in var that we could abuse. nothing that we'd have access to. What we could do instead, if we look at our challenge lab here, let's focus on getting flag three. We know that flag three is gonna be controlled by FTP user. And if we cat out Etsy password, we know that FTP user has a login shell right here. So we have a few options here. Actually, before I tell you the options, for all of you watching in the live stream, let me ask you, if we want to compromise another user called FTP user, what are some potential options that we have to try to compromise this user? What should we be looking for or what can we try against the target?
Let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, I'm going to set up my notes for that. I'm just going to do like a H2 and we'll say compromising FTP user, hopefully. And I want you to think through all of the information we have up to this point. So if I scroll to the top here, there's a few hints that we're kind of given here. We have this FTP anonymous file share. We enumerated this in part one of this series when we were doing our initial enumeration. Remember when we connected to this, we were able to download a password list.txt. And I, I even said in our notes, let's keep this in mind if anything requires brute forcing. And knowing that this is a capstone challenge for a course on hacking Linux, well, brute forcing user accounts is likely covered. And so what I'm thinking is if we want to compromise the FTP user, well, from the anonymous FTP share, we have a password list.txt. What if we try to do password brute forcing or password spraying against the FTP user using the password list.txt that we found in the FTP share? There's different ways that we can do this. You could, tr well, actually you couldn't try doing password spraying with SSH because it's key-based authentication, but you can actually try password spraying against FTP itself. Although anonymous access is enabled, if we get a valid user, it should tell us, I believe, and allow us to log in as that user. I'll show you how we can do this. I believe we can use Hydra, which not in the, in that terminal right here, and we can exit out of user one. We can use Hydra to do various forms of password spraying. In Hydra, I believe we can target FTP specifically. You can actually see the syntax right there. And so that's what I'm gonna try to do. We'll do Hydra dash L FTP user dash P for our password list and it's just password list dot text. And we'll do FTP ascension dot hack smarter. I think we can do the name like that. We might have to change that to the IP. We'll go ahead and find out. We'll hit enter and right away we actually get a hit. It looks like FTP has the password of secret. Same password I use for my bank account, that's pretty crazy, but our thinking was correct. So let's go ahead and grab this for our notes. And we will drop it in there. So we were able to compromise FTP user, hopefully we can test it, but FTP user in secret. Now we can't just SSH though, because remember key base auth is enabled and I'll show you what I'm talking about because this is good defense in depth on the blue team. You should always use uh, key base authentication and not password based authentication for SSH because then even if a password is compromised an outside attacker cannot SSH into the machine, but I'll show you what happens. We'll do SSH FTP user at ascension dot hack smarter. And you can see we're not even prompted for a password, but the reason we can use it is we already have a valid SSH session eternally on the machine as user two. So then we can say, uh, we can switch user to uh, FTP user and the password is secret. And now we have compromised the FTP user. And we'll add that to our notes. In the SSH shell. So, so Tyler, basically you're gonna get this pin code on your phone, but it's for me. I got you. I'll, I'll let you know what it is. All right. Now let's go over to opt. Uh, maybe go to FTP user. <laughs> Why am I trying to cat a directory? Come on guys. LS LA and we can go ahead and cat out flag three and hopefully we found the, the third flag. I'm going to drop that in my notes as well. Retrieving flag three. And we will paste it in. Grab our flag value. And drop it in right there. Now I want to make videos on each one of these flags. So if you're watching this as a standalone video, this is a shorter video, but I showed you how to retrieve flag three. And we learned some cool things in this by retrieving flag three. We learn number one, how to do password spraying via FTP. 
Hydra is an incredible tool. It can be used for all kinds of password spraying from FTP to SSH to even web servers, as long as everything is configured properly. It makes it really easy to do password spraying against something like FTP. We just pass it the username and the password list, and if it gets a hit, it will let us know. And then once we had that, we couldn't SSH in directly because of the key-based authentication, but because we had an SSH shell already, we could just switch to the FTP user and retrieve flag number three. So my challenge for you is I want you to try to get flag number four on your own. Do some enumeration from the perspective of the FTP user. See what you are able to find. If you get stuck, that's totally fine. Join me in the next video. I'll walk you through it. But I do want you to try it on your own. A lot of learning comes through the struggle. So have fun learning. Happy hacking. And I'll catch you in the next one.